In this brief video, I want to show you how to solve for the area of a polygon, given some limited information. Um, but first, before we get start solving for this particular shape, in this case we have a hexagon, we need to go over a couple of vocabulary terms. First of all, we're dealing with a regular polygon here. And regular polygon means that all the sides are going to be the same length, and all the interior angles are all going to be the same as well. Um, and we need to know what an apothem is. The apothem, which we're given here, is basically the distance between the center of the shape and the side of the shape. So it's that distance from the center to the side. Now, there are a couple of things uh, inherently in the properties of these shapes, being that it's a regular polygon, and with the apothem uh, that we're going to use in order to solve this, this area for this shape. Now, it doesn't look like really we have enough information to solve this at first glance because all we're given is this apothem here. We don't know any of the side lengths. And if we look at our formula, and if you want to know how we derive that formula, you can watch a video that I did previously. Um, but the formula for the area of any polygon is going to be one half the apothem, which is this A, times the perimeter. So one half times the apothem times the perimeter. In this case, we're given the apothem. So we're given part of the information that we can plug into our formula, but in order to solve for the area of the complete shape, we need to know what this perimeter is. And since we are not given any side lengths, well, guess what? We're going to have to solve for one of those side lengths. Well, there's a couple of properties inherent, as, as I said, in this shape uh, that allow us to solve for the side. Um, first of all, let's uh, do a little reconfiguring of this shape. And let's draw a couple of radii. Now these radii, we refer to these kind of like they do in a circle. The radius of a circle goes from the center to the outside of the circle. Um, in this case, the radius of a shape goes from the center to the vertices or the corners. So these are the radii. Now what we've done by drawing two radii here is we've done a couple of things. We've, we've created a triangle here in the hexagon and you may notice that there are six of these, one per side. There are six of these congruent triangles in any regular hexagon. Okay, A pentagon would have five, an octagon would have eight, but you have an equal number of triangles inside this particular shape. Also, by drawing these radii, we've created a central angle here. A central angle is just an angle that's formed at the center of the shape. And because we have six congruent triangles, we also have six congruent uh, interior uh, central angles. And uh, one thing that we're going to need to know is we're going to need to know that measurement in order to solve for the side. So to figure out the measurement of that central angle, first we have to understand that just like it does in a circle, if we were to add all of the central angles together in the center of the shape, they would all add up to 360 degrees. So it's one full rotation through the center of that shape is 360 degrees. And to figure out the central angle measurement, all we need to do is take our 360 degrees, divide by the number of central angles we have. In this case, since we have six triangles, we have six central angles that are formed. And we find out that each one of those angles is 60 degrees. Well, why do we need to know that, do you ask? Well, we need to know that so we can figure out the side. And that tells us what kind of triangle we're going to be working with, because we're going to be using triangles to solve this problem. Now, we have a, an equilateral triangle in this case, or an isosceles triangle in other shapes. But we can't really use, we haven't learned anything about the properties of these isosceles triangles in order to solve for a side length. However, we have used right triangles. And in this case, if we look at half of this triangle that we formed earlier, we have a right triangle. This apothem is always going to be perpendicular to the side. And that apothem also does one, a couple of things. Because it is perpendicular to the side, it acts like a perpendicular bisector to the side. So this part of the side is going to be equal to this part of the side. Basically splits it in half. And it also bisects the angle that it touches up here. So this central angle is also split in half by the apothem. So knowing that, if this central angle here is 60 degrees, then the angle for the smaller triangle we just created has to be half of that, which is 30 degrees. And because we have a 30 degree angle here, 
and is a right triangle, I know that this other angle is going to be 60 degrees. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, one of those special triangles we learned about that has special properties um, as it relates to their side lengths. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, if I know the shorter leg, I can use that shorter leg to solve for both of the hypotenuse and for the longer leg given some shortcuts. Whatever this amount is times 2 gives me the hypotenuse because this is half of the hypotenuse of this triangle here. And whatever this shorter leg is times the square root of 3 will give me this longer leg. Well, we have the longer leg here. So instead of multiplying by the square root of 3 to get to the apothem length, since we're given the apothem length of 13, if we just simply divide 13 by the square root of 3, we'll get the side length of this portion of the side of the hexagon, this portion of our triangle. And 13 divided by the square root of 3 is 7.5. Knowing that this length is 7.5, now I know that the complete side length of the hexagon is 7.5 times 2. Since I have 7.5 here, 7.5 here, I know that this complete side length is going to be 15. And since there are six congruent sides, taking that 15 and multiplying by the six sides gives me the perimeter of 90. So we found the perimeter. We know the apothem. Now we can plug all those numbers into our formula, and we can solve for the area of this hexagon. So if we rewrite our formula, given the information we have, 1 half times the apothem, which in this case is 13 inches, the perimeter, which in this case is 90, then the area is going to be 1 half of 90, which is 45, times 13. And we find that our area, in this case, is 585 square inches. In the next video, we're going to solve for a pentagon given simply the side information.